There's obviously a big looming story, and I'm glad that we've had a couple of days to sit on it and see what came of it. Um, and that's the story of Tyler O'Neill and Oliver Marmol, our manager and our was starting center fielder. Uh, don't know where that's going to lead. But uh, to recap quickly, obviously, I'm sure everybody's heard of it and seen it. But uh, there was a play at the plate uh, late in the game. I believe it was in the seventh inning of game two, uh, somewhere around there. And O'Neal was on second. Donovan was was batting. And he ropes a, a line drive into right field. And Tyler O'Neal, I mean, from the looks of it, from the very beginning of it, didn't think that he would go any further than third base. Uh, but when he took a look up, he saw that Pop Warner was sending him home. And he took a turn and... The big thing that stood out to me is that he turned and looked for the throw uh, from Ronald Acuna Jr., which I'm sure he knew the whole way that Acuna was going to get him out. Um, and sure enough, he did. Uh, immediately, Twitter was like, what was Tyler O'Neill doing? It didn't seem like he was running at all. And I, that was my first impression. It didn't seem like he was really busting it out. Uh, his words are that he was. He said that he was grinding his ass off, uh, and he doesn't think that any kind of character dis decharacterization of his effort uh, is warranted, but that's sure enough where Ali Marmol went. Um, immediately into the press room, Ali said that that was a lack of hustle and it was unacceptable. Uh, he thought he would leave it there, but then going into the next game, uh, mon or Wednesday morning, he cuts O'Neill from the lineup and he says that there's a standard of play that we have for the Cardinals, and if you don't meet it, you're not going to play. Um, a lot of mixed communication because O'Neill said that that was a scheduled day off, uh, which is really weird if Marmol's then doubling down and saying that uh, he's not meeting the standard. So that's why he got benched. But O'Neill's saying that it was because it was a scheduled day off. Who knows? A lot of different variables here. A lot of different things that are kind of messed up going into Wednesday that kind of really bugged me. Um but Brendan, since you weren't in town, you weren't really, you didn't watch the game, but you kind of saw everything aftermath. I, I wanted to get your opinion on this because I know that you're, you're currently coaching at the high school level. Obviously this is contentious in terms of how coaches go about dealing with their players. Uh, give me a little bit of your thoughts on, on O'Neill in general. What, if you were able to see the play and, and how maybe, uh, or Ali handled it, did he handle it correctly? Uh, so the very first thing, I'm just going to say it, man. This is absolutely ridiculous from Oliver Marmol, in my opinion. Uh, curious to see what your take is. But this is not how you go about uh, being a manager. Uh, as you guys, some people might remember back in June of last year, uh, in 2022, Marmol called out Harrison Bader for lack of hustle. Harrison Bader took it. He took it well. And then he, I guess he got better. I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but he played this card before. And that's the weirdest thing about it. It's like, okay, dude, you played this card before. So why do you feel the need to play it again? I watched the clip, you know, so all these headlines are going around. Okay. I see the headlines. I got to see the clip. I watched the clip. Okay. Why are we sending him? And I know that's, that's the biggest question, man. That's, why do we send him? That's beside the point when it comes to this kind of, but like, why is the coaching staff not taking responsibility? Why did, now to go back to last season, why, why didn't Marmol not take responsibility for not taking Ryan Helsley out when he clearly should have in the playoffs? Yep. You know, it's like, if you're going to give this responsibility to a player where he had a mental error, then why don't you own up to your own mental mistakes? Especially when it comes to lo losing us a playoff game, uh, and I know I'm I'm just going to go off on more of a tangent. You know, yeah. as a coach, you know, you asked me that. And, yeah, man, it's equivalent to me going up to the parents and saying, hey, one of these kids and saying the name didn't hustle today. He's going to be benched tomorrow. You know, it's like that's just not how you handle it. You go, yeah. you you take this situation like a man, and, and you talk to O'Neal face-to-face. And I think O'Neal has every single right to say some of the things that he did. 
uh, O'Neill said that it should have been handled differently. And I totally agree. I mean, I right now, as it stands, you can tell I'm very passionate about this. Uh, I've, al- I've already had a weird feeling about Marmol, and I always defend managers. I, I don't blame managers for a lot, but as it stands right now, my opinion may change in the future. I do not like Oliver Mar- Marmol. Yeah, uh, his, that the doubling down really bugged me, uh, because yeah. especially with the because I don't know. Obviously, I don't know if it was a scheduled day off, but if it was, that's what O'Neill's saying. Then why are you saying that it's not because he played to your standard of play? Like if if Carlson was supposed to play that day and O'Neill was supposed to have a day off, then I don't understand how you then come in and tell the media that it's because he wasn't playing to your standard. The other thing is, is like you said, there's been some errors, two errors that we'll talk about, one a little bit later. But Pop Warner, there's no reason to send Tyler O'Neill. Um, I know Ali said that the it's not O'Neill's call to make. He does it doesn't compute to him that I'll or that O'Neill, it sucks that they both have O and O in their name. Um, <laughs> that Ali or that O'Neill has a hamstring problem. And he's like, it doesn't compute to me that players want to stay on the field for 160 games, meaning that although O'Neill has an injury issue that he's worried about, he should not double guess or second guess Pop Warner's send. But at the same time, it's wet out. Acuna has a cannon. So even if the ball's wet, you have to assume that that he's going to get it to home. Two hops, one hop, he's going to get it there. And three, like there's there's no way there, there's it's just not a good send. That's that's the bottom line, yeah, which, and is the, which is the problem is that the, the whole thing is being blown off on O'Neill to say that he second guessed his third base coach, which he did. I'm not going to deny that because there's no reason you also get the get the signal and then look at look at the throw. I mean, that's just something that you learn even at, at, I'm sure you're teaching your kids now, like you you can't look at the throw. But at the same time, like this whole play is terrible and that it's only worse that Ollie just starts doubling down and saying that O'Neill did. did the, it's all on O'Neill. Yeah. And the other thing we have to keep in mind, I mean, game situation, man, like as a coach, if the scores. Yeah, that run to, doesn't matter. If the score is four to one. We got to get a rally thing. going. What is the point of sending him? If it's the go ahead yeah. run, then yeah, go ahead run. And, you know, I obviously I don't want to. I don't know if they're I don't know. There may be some lack of hustle there. Sure. Whatever. But like. I don't know. I just I just don't see how he can make that big of a deal of it. And, you know, in, in, to the media, like, what is that going to yeah. accomplish? You know, it, it worked. Like I said, it worked for Bader, but like this is a whole different situation. Yeah. And it was kind of interesting. Uh, MLB Network uh, was talking about it before the game. They televised Wednesday's game and there I can't remember who it was. I, I wish I had taken a note of his name, but there was a guy who was a coach for the Houston Astros. And he said that um, this kind of similar situation happened with Jose Altuve. And what he did was Jose didn't run out a pop up or something like that. And what he said was, is that Jose, I'm I'm not playing like he called Jose into his office and told him that he's not going to play him today. And he's like, I'm, I'm not going to play you unless I, I know that I'm going to get everything out of you. And. Uh, that caused Altuve to, to just bow out, say okay. But he came back into the office. He said, "No, coach, you gotta let me play." He's like, "I'm Jose Altuve. How are you mm-hmm. not gonna play me?" Yeah. And the coach said, "You have to go ask your teammates whether or not they'll accept that style of play." And when I heard him say that, I was like, "Dude, that is perfect." I mean, mm-hmm. that's that's per that's like dad sitting you down and explaining exactly why you did something wrong to to your sister or your brother or whatever, and you have to go to apologize to them. Like it's, it's parenting. It's like, it's deal with weird, it. it's, yeah, deal yeah. with it as a team. You yeah. Know? Right. And, and at first I was like, good. Ollie's setting a precedent. Like, it sounds like he's saying, this is our standard. Here it is. Then he benched him. And I was like, okay, I guess that's his uh, setting the standard. And then all this other stuff spiraled out of control. And it's really not a good look for Ollie, which is unfortunate because now we're, now we're on a, Three game losing streak. It obviously doesn't help the the team morale. Uh, who knows if that really did come into play? Uh, I think it helped some, and we'll talk about that a little bit later. 
Uh, but before that, I mean... <laughs> <laughs>